Hey everybody, this is Bob Kovacs here at Wirefly with part two of our two-part review on the ZTE Optic Tablet for Sprint. One of the first things I'd like to do is run a quadrant benchmark test on this. So I'm going to go ahead and run the full quadrant benchmark and we'll pick this up when it's all done running. This is the final graphics test that's part of Quadrant, and uh, here we go. It's going to ask if I want the scores, and I do, and there you go. So here is the score. The third bar down is the score here on the ZTE Optic, and it says the score is 1,274, 1274. So uh, you can see here the Samsung Galaxy Tab, which is uh, definitely competition, for the ZTE Optic got a much, much higher score. And uh, the ZTE Optic really seems to fall down, especially in this green area. Now the green, if you, can, you can't really see these, uh, but they're very tiny. Green is the I.O., the input-output performance of uh, the Optic. And the uh, Optic, as you can see, is not nearly as good in that regard as the Samsung Galaxy Tab is. Of course, the Galaxy Tab is a lot more expensive, but this really is a fairly lackluster Quadrant score. Now, this is the new version of Quadrant, which you can download for free from Google Play. That's what used to be called the Android market. And uh, you can download it and run it on your device. It's easy to do. And this new version does actually test the speed of uh, dual-core processors, which the uh, ZTE Optic has. However, I'm not convinced that it works all that well with Android 3 devices. Of course, the Galaxy Tab is an Android 3 device, so who knows, maybe it uh, is properly tuned for Android 3. So that's what it looked like for the Quadrant score. Let's go back. I want to look at the system information here a little bit. You can see 3.2, that's the version of Android that's running in here. And uh, you can see that the maximum frequency of the processor is 1,188 megahertz. That's essentially, oops, you can't really see it very well, can you? So that's essentially 1.2 gigahertz, and it's running dual core. The memory here is uh, showing that it's got approximately one gigabyte of memory. And uh, let's go back. So that's what Quadrant looked like on the ZTE Optic. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the camera. I mentioned that there is a rear camera. We'll go ahead and punch up the camera icon. So there you go, there's a little Wirefly sticker right there. Now if you want to switch to the front camera, just touch that button there and it will switch to the front camera and there I am with my dorky looking glasses. Okay, sorry about the scary looking glasses there people. So let's go back and here we go. Now I took some shots with this. Let's go ahead and take a look at those shots. First I set up a still life on my desk. So there's the basic still life. And uh, overall I thought it was fairly good performance from the optic. I thought it was, it focused very well. And uh, however the, the contrast could have been a little sharper. The contrast could have had more punch. So the blacks aren't quite as black as they ought to be, although the whites look pretty good. Now when I go in for a close-up here with my still life, you'll see that the sharpness is really excellent. And again, I took this with available light on my desk, just some overhead fluorescent lights, the same office lighting that everybody else has. No additional lighting. I didn't try to augment this in any way. So I thought it did, again, pretty good job with the sharpness and... Um, you know, I was reasonably pleased with the red, green, blue, although I thought the contrast could have been better. And then I went and took some pictures. Now this is Paula on the left and Stefan on the right. They are two of our excellent customer service people here at Wirefly. And if you end up calling Wirefly, you just might speak to one or the other of them. Now there is no flash for the main camera on the optic. So when I position Paula and Stefan with a bright light to their back, that bright light overwhelmed the camera. There's no flash to fill the front, so their faces are very dark. So I rotated them around to put the, the light now is shining in their faces, and uh, Paula and Stefan look very good, very much better in that shot there. So it does, I thought it did a pretty good job with flesh tones. Now it could be a little more contrasty, but uh, again, the, the focus is pretty good. Can't complain about the focus at all. Then I took the ZTE Optic outside and shot a little video outside. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. This is video recorded with the ZTE Optic, a seven inch tablet for Sprint. Now this is supposed to be 720p HD video and uh, I'm panning around so you can see what's going on. 
We'll uh, see what the video and the audio sounds like. There's the Wirefly building. Now, this is a cloudy day in early April. We've had such beautiful weather here in uh, the, the Washington, D.C. area. Northern Virginia is where we are. Such beautiful weather lately that I can't complain about the occasional cloudy day. But uh, you can see all the leaves are starting to come out on all the trees. and It's really starting to look like spring. So let's go inside and see what the video and hear what the audio looks like from the ZTE Optic. I thought that video looked pretty good. It was sharp and the colors looked pretty good. A couple of faults. Uh, for one thing, it looks like as I'm panning around that the motion is not nearly as smooth as it should be. It's as though the ZTE optic is not showing that video or not recording it at 30 frames per second. It's recording it at something less than 30 frames per second. I don't know what that might be. I've not seen uh, specs that really detail that. But it's my gut feeling that we're not recording 30 frames per second. It is 720p, and it looked clear enough, but when you pan around, it looked uh, kind of jerky. So um, that, I think, is a, a frame rate question that someone uh, needs to answer for me before I feel comfortable about that. The audio is kind of a mixed bag. I thought the audio was clear. And the position I'm standing in when I record that is really quite noisy. We, we are very close. The Wirefly building is right next to a major road here in the Washington area called the Dulles Toll Road. There's always a lot of traffic and a lot of noise on the Dulles Toll Road. And that noise is very easy to hear where I was standing when I record this shot. However, the ZTE Optic has some kind of excellent uh, noise cancellation going because you cannot hear that noise at all. So I'm uh, very impressed by that very good noise cancellation. On the other hand, my voice sounds very processed. It doesn't sound very natural to me. So maybe you got the same impression when you were listening to it. My voice is clear. You can hear what I'm saying. It just didn't sound particularly natural to me. It sounded very processed. So that's what the photographic and video performance of the ZTE Optic looks like. Now, uh, I'm very impressed, by the way, with the Android 3.2. It looks good. It's reasonably smooth. I like the way it works. To get to your apps, you just touch the app button here, and now here's all your apps. And, uh, you know, if you want to go to YouTube, you can just touch the YouTube button and away you go. Uh, again, this is running on a 3G network for Sprint, so we can assume that the uh, performance is going to be relatively slow. I noticed that my camera is focusing on its reflection, and that's one of my uh, uh, things that I've seen about tablets is that they really tend to reflect like a mirror. There I am. So, uh, hi folks. So they really reflect just like a, a mirror, and uh, you know, you just, I guess, have to get used to that when you have something like a tablet. So what is my overall impression then of the ZTE Optic? Considering its affordable price, I think it is a very well-made, it's a really excellent buy for its affordable price. Now, if you set it next to a Samsung Galaxy Tab, the Galaxy Tab is going to look more punchy. It's, I think, going to possibly look more pleasing. But the build quality is no better. This is as well-built as the Samsung Galaxy is. Uh, photos with this were pretty good. I mean, you're not going to be pulling it out and taking lots of photos with it. But it does have a reasonably good camera that's fairly sharp. The video, I thought, uh, the frame rate could be a little better. But overall, uh, and, and the Quadrant performance is not as high as I was hoping it would be with the dual-core processor. Still, the, the build quality, the overall quality of the device, and its usability on Sprint's network is really very good. So I'm impressed particularly by the price and the build quality, the overall quality of the ZTE Optic. Of course, if you want the Optic at a great price, you should check with Wirefly first because I'm pretty sure we're going to have a good price on the ZTE Optic. So check with us first. Hey everybody, this is Bob Kovacs here at Wirefly. Thanks for watching.